Okay, so this panel is going to be, you know, the question that's presented to us and the way I'm looking at it is the fact of answering this concept of surfboards and soul. You know, does a surfboard have a soul? I mean, does it really have a spirit? And for most of us that actually ride boards and we shape boards or we've had, you know, 80 years of surfing or whatever, but before we get to that, you know, I just wanted to put it out there because it is a panel discussion and lectures can be long. <clears throat> I've, given them a lot, I've given a lot of them. But, you know, a little background is that I wasn't really a part of the industry itself, though the industry of modern surfing created me at the same time. You could say I was, you know, I was the rising of the dark night. And from surfing I learned, or, f or from modern surfing I learned something unique that I didn't want to be a, a product of the surfing industry today. I wanted to be who I was born to be, and that was just to go ride waves. And that's who I am today. And I walked away from uh, the surf industry. I was at my, at my pinnacle of it all. And the reason I walked away, and the reason I think of myself as a dark knight, is because in one way, a part of me, or a portion of me was dying. And I was, you know, my involvement in drugs, and shooting people, and just going crazy, because of my ego. And so, when I look back at life, you know, I stepped aside in about 74, 75, at a very young age, uh, and. You know, I figured I could dominate everything, but there was a calling to home and a calling to the ocean. And I wasn't finding it there in surfing. So I gave all my boards away and walked away. And I never looked back till 1988, when I was captured, kidnapped, put in a boat, and dragged off to a surfing destination. But I was surfing. I was surfing in a different way. My uh, journey took me to unique places that I had forgotten about in my home, and that was the ocean. And I lived in the ocean, I grew up in the ocean, I was born to the ocean, and the ocean is my home, my mother, and my lover. And, you know, so, though I gave up surfing in a modern way, I went back and started looking at the things that was taught to me over the time, and the uniqueness of life. And, and how we live, where we live. And it's a place that's not just a part of Hawaii. It's also our mother earth. And we're all a part of that, of that planet, or this planet. And this planet is the spirit that's within every living thing, or every thing that is part of it, you know? That, that life. We can call it heaven, we can call it hell, we can call it whatever we want. But the bottom line is spiritually we're connected to this planet. And the only way you're going to get off it is somebody launches you into space. Right? But other than that, the spirit and we're connected to it. And, you know, we're going down this road. And so I looked at waves, I looked at surfboards as the question comes up whether it has a spirit, a soul, and what we think about it. And I slept with every single board I ever had. Any female that was there, they could go sleep someplace else, or they could sleep with my surfboard too. But I slept with every single board I've ever had. There are exceptions. Some of them were just too big, and I couldn't handle them. So I had to put them aside. <laughs> And then there are a few that end up elsewhere, uh, and they're not my boards. They belong to somebody else, though I might have uh, had a hand in creating them. But the most unique board that I never had an opportunity to touch was my first board. 
My first surfboard was created by my father, and that's where I learned to carve wooden surfboards. Because I was a very spoiled kid, because I come from a very unique native way of thinking of a family, right? And firstborn son, and with that, my dad knows I'm just going to be in the ocean every day, and I was. So at five years old, I demanded a board, and I knew exactly the board I wanted. And that's when Wardy had a shop in Hawaii, uh, just outside of Waikiki. It was a beautiful olive green surfboard, long board. It was 9'6", and that's the surfboard I wanted, except we couldn't afford it. So my dad goes out, finds a piece of wood, comes back, and I watch him spend a week carving it by hand. And when he looked at me and said, here, here's your surfboard, let's go surfing. I told him I hated it. I just hate it. So right there on the spot, he broke it, threw it in the fire. And that's pretty much how, when I quit surfing in 75, I looked back at that. And that was the thing that called to me the most. Because, you know, you can't get back something that you've given away forever because of your stupidity. And that made me realize the importance of every surfboard I had, every surfboard I gave away, and the great shapers that shaped for me, Dick Brewer, Differenderfer. I mean, I learned so much from uh, Mike Differenderfer, and I had the opportunity of riding his boards during the changing times when we were transitioning from longboards to uh, specialized surfboards to just unique shortboards. And I rode some of the best boards. And the greatest board I had in the modern era was made by Mike Differenderfer. And that was my balsa board that I actually tracked down after many years when it got some guy sold it without my permission, and I finally found it three years ago. And it had transitioned itself. It had gone from a beautiful board created by Mike Differenderfer to a chopped up short board that just died. I couldn't believe in South Africa, they were so ludicrous that they didn't even know the value of that board. Because Mike didn't make that many wooden surfboards. And that was a very, very special gift. And though he was disappointed that I lost it, it was great to know that it ended up in somewhat still having a life. And I don't know about you guys, and when we talk about whether or not surfing has a spirit or surfboards have spirits, but every board I touch, to me, is my opportunity to revive that piece of wood and give its life back. And that's how I actually shape. So, you know, for us, that we're here to address this question from our various points of views and perspectives and open it up to you guys at the same time, you know, I don't want to keep this long, but definitely my point of view, and I'll throw it out there because everybody can shred me or love me. Who cares? But I do. Okay, you guys ready? Let's go. Come on, Bob, throw it out there.